Finland Saga, Season 2, Episode 2. Einar and Thorfinn now on the same farm, totally of their own free will. Episode 2, Kettle's Farm. Hi. <laughs> Thorfinn looks a little shriveled and tiny. The farm. The forest. And Thorfinn has an axe, so... It's lumber. No, it's more wheat. <laughs> more wheat, good. More beautiful golden wheat, which is thematically significant for the show. What kind of slave owner is this? Well, if true, they super lucked out. Especially considering what that other guy wanted to do with his body. The advantages of being ugly. Dodge a huge bullet there. Will you, though? Will we ever be free? What does it even mean to be free? And he chose to stuck around, that says a lot. As we all know, Thorfinn is an abundance of patience and I'm sure he'll, he'll be very hospitable. Maybe he will. I don't know. Maybe he's mellowed out, but in a very broken way. Maybe Thorfinn being broken is the start of his new journey. There it is, the abundance of patience and kindness. What a difference perspective makes, though. Like, thinking about how happy this makes me and how happy it must make Einar to think he could buy his freedom after three years of slavery. To think that one could feel happiness about this kind of situation, which is basically just going going back to less than what he already had, but more than he has now. He's the best kind of slave master. I wonder what language they're actually speaking. Three years worth. It would appear. I don't. I love this. I don't know why. Like I love this for Thorfinn. Uh, he's in a terrible state, clearly. But there's something that feels so much better to me about this broken state than the insane, rage-filled state he was in before. Just because I feel like it's a new beginning. It's kind of kind of like the the forest itself, right? Like they're knocking things down to build again. They're doing all this destruction so they can build a field of wheat. It's really exciting to see where he can go from here. It's also exciting because you know there's still a danger for him. He could easily go back into that life depending on circumstance because he doesn't have control over himself. I don't think he's just like in a nothing state, it's just a sad void. It also just feels really cool, like just two dudes working on trees. Physical labor. Just honest work. That first day is gonna be so rough. His body's not used to it yet. Sack bento. He got a little ahead of himself there. I don't know. Bread and cheese? I've had worse meals. <laughs> Dude, chill. Like, he's gotten so lucky considering his situation. Actually, yes. <laughs> what a question. I mean, all things considered. I can just feel Thorfinn in this scene, even though he's not on screen. Because Thorfinn has real strength, Einar doesn't. That's probably why their reactions are different. Because Thorfinn can just kick their asses, no, no problem. Einar's been kicked around his whole life, totally powerless in episode one. Einar might interpret this for weakness, too, from Thorfinn, but it's not. There's just no idea what Thorfinn is. Not his fault. For that matter, Thorfinn could escape, right? I mean, he, he could easily escape and do whatever the hell he wanted because he's Thorfinn and he's a super adept killer who's fought in wars and has been an assassin and has infiltrated forts, etc. Feels like he's partly here by choice and I can't say for sure exactly why that is or what his ultimate goal is, but I can say that it is something to just have a goal, any goal, to have a task with a clear path where you can see and measure progress, perhaps especially when it affords you some kind of stability, which Thorfinn has never had ever, except for, you know, when he was five, six years old. Mm -hmm. 
Why is it so gratifying to watch this? Why is it so gratifying to watch them like work on this farm and struggle with heavy logs? Why do I want to do this? How do they make farm work so awesome? Yeah, maybe not the hunger part. Thorfinn can do a lot for this guy. Even though he's an unwilling teacher. Well, their master's a slave too. I mean, not to make light of their actual slavery. Maybe I'm just having a Kenny Ackerman moment. Everyone's a slave to something. The master's a slave to his farm. I, like, the show is an investigation of freedom, or it's one of its central explorations. I'm just thinking that Thorfinn is a slave now, and he was totally free roaming the high seas with a band of Vikings who just pillaged and took everything they wanted, and at times of real affluence and prosperity and abundance of food, etc. Yet, Thorfinn feels more free now to me than he did in season one in a, in a certain fundamental way. <laughs> Doesn't know who he is. This guy's so chill, but you can tell him about the retainers, yeah. But then the retainers might get revenge. Hey, suddenly Honor decided that the farm wasn't so bad. He could stay a little while longer. That's not the girl the retainers are talking about, is it? If he's like me, if he feels that way, he's lost his appetite anyway, so problem solved. Enjoy not not sleeping for a while. Report who? <laughs> what are you talking about? Einar's uppers seem especially fueled by just his total powerlessness in his life, all the ways he's been incapable of actually affecting anything important. <laughs> This the farm just seems too nice and peaceful to exist in this world of Vinland Saga. Disaster is definitely coming this season. I don't know if they're gonna be able to plant wheat in this forest that they're clearing. I don't know, things are a lot more fun when they're by choice. Is this foreshadowing? Someone can get a cup below the knee with a sickle? This guy's a real wild card. I'm sure nothing bad will happen to him. I used to be a warrior like you and then I took a scythe to the knee. Speaking of perspective and expectation. Another one. We got another character in the show. And if it's anything like the past, he's just inviting tragedy. Everybody's a warrior until the Vikings show up to pillage. Actually, one of my first jobs ever was working on a farm. After high school, I was determined not to go to college, so I wanted to go to Japan and try to find work, not understanding the visa system that you actually needed to have a college degree. And so I, I found an arrangement where I could work on a farm in northern Japan in exchange for food and housing, which I did for, I think, summer. It was really tough work, but it was also really gratifying. I think one cool thing about manual labor or physical labor is that food tastes so good. That end-of-the-day meal. And there's something nice about the ache. There's something nice about feeling like you put your body to use as long as it's not, you know, an actual injury or chronic pain or something. Like going to the gym, but also knowing you've done a task makes it even better. There was something about that experience that I think helped me grow up one level. There was a little bit of rugged ruggedness that it added to my, my character. <laughs> I mean, it also seems like they have a really great community. It doesn't seem like the worst thing for the sun, but warrior ambitions, etc., adventure, which I also, I get, I mean, not judging. It's a familiar name. Neither the moth nor the flame was harmed. What? What a creep. <laughs> Vinland Saga. <laughs> the world of Vinland Saga. Whoops. You sacrifice your future and your morals. Yes. Ugly. Perspective and expectations. I'm a big man. I'm gonna be a great soldier in Canute's army. Do these guys have an angle too? 
今夜は語り明かそう若様セッションの悩み聞こうじゃないのてめえら俺を酒の魚にしよってんだろふざけんな帰るぞ俺は It's gonna target on his back Everybody wants a piece おとなしく後継ぎはいいもんよ戦争を知らねえんだ Yes 戦士がかっこいいもんだと思い込んでんだろ Basically 俺の住んでた村に二度兵隊が来た What a coincidence. I also have experience going to villages. They have this in common. Both watched their fathers die fighting to protect them. <laughs> what are these Danes? And you're sharing a. I was going to say bad, but you're sharing a lump of straw with one. Nope. No way. Gonna carry that for his whole life. I love stories like this that, that allow this much time to pass because it raises some really complex questions and reveals a level of thinking that I think we don't normally operate on or you don't see commonly. The less familiar you are with someone, the less you're acquainted, the less you care about them, the more black and white their character becomes and the easier it is to cast judgment on them as a whole and paint pictures of them with very broad strokes. So if people do things that we disapprove of, there's just a huge incentive to put a label, ranking them on a scale of good or bad and that's sort of just what, what they are. And I can't even really totally criticize that because you just can't know the nuance of everything and you have to make snap judgments sometimes in order to navigate the world in life. Even if it would be better to have the full nuanced truth. I think a problem that I can more easily take an issue with is applying that to all of time. Because someone has done something in the past, has done something wrong, that's just the end of their character assessment. They are just cursed to have that definition for the rest of their lives. It's so clearly not the case. I mean, like I believe so strongly that people can change. I know for a fact that in many cases, wrongdoing affects the perpetrator in very severe ways. And like Thorfinn is going to carry this for the rest of his life. That's, I mean, he's hell. His punishment is hell. Shows like this and Full Metal Alchemist comes to mind allow us the, the luxury of following a character's whole progression. I think it's intu intuitively obvious that Thorfinn is not the same Thorfinn that he was, and he's not the Danes that pillaged those villages, even though at one point he was. Well, I think it's very difficult, maybe even impossible to apply that gravity of thought to every person or every story that you hear about someone and what they've done. I think it's just a good card to play, you know, a good thing to keep in mind just as a reference point for evaluating how to treat others. Even having not felt it, like we would feel the sympathy and compassion for Thorfinn being intimately acquainted with him, it can be moved to a level of just logic where there's the thought, okay, there's probably a lot more here than I can see. A lot of time has passed, so maybe in the absence of information, you can assume the best or at least not assume the worst. Funny how episode two is pretty serene they're kind of just doing farm work there's a little you know conflict but it's mostly just argumentation yet it still feels just as gripping really cool